solar radiation heat balance and temperature of the earth the earth receives almost all of its energy from the sun the earth in turn radiates back to space the energy received from the sun as a result the earth neither warms up nor does it get cooled over a period of time the amount of heat received by different parts of the earth is not the same this variation causes pressure differences in the atmosphere this in turn leads to the transfer of heat from one region to the other by the winds this essay explains the process of heating and cooling of the atmosphere and the resultant temperature distribution over the earth's surface solar radiation the earth's surface receives most of its energy in short wavelengths the energy received by the earth is known as incoming solar radiation or insolation as the earth is a geoid resembling a sphere the sun's rays fall obliquely at the top of the atmosphere and the earth intercepts a very small portion of the sun's energy on an average the earth receives 1.95 1.94 calories per square centimeter per minute at the top of its atmosphere the solar output received at the top of the atmosphere varies slightly in a year due to the variations in the distance between the earth and the sun during its revolution around the sun the earth is farthest from the sun that is 150 million kilometers on the 4th of july this position of the earth is called aphelion in january the earth is nearest to the sun that is approximately 140 million kilometers this position is called perihelion therefore the annual isolation received therefore the annual insulation received by the earth in january is slightly more than the amount received in july however the effect of this variation in the solar output is masked by other factors like the distribution of land and sea and the atmospheric circulation hence this variation in the solar output does not have a great effect on daily weather changes on the surface of the earth variability of insulation at the surface of the earth the amount and the intensity of insulation vary during a day in a season and in a year the factors that cause these variation in insulation are the rotation of the earth on its axis the angle of inclination of the sun's rays the length of the day the transparency of the atmosphere the configuration of land in terms of its aspect and the configuration of land in terms of its aspect the last two however have less influence the fact that the earth's axis makes an angle of 66 degrees with a plane of its orbit around the sun has a greater influence on the amount of insulation received at different latitudes note the variations in the duration of the day at different latitudes on solstices the second factor that determines the color of the sky is the result of the scattering of the amount of insulation received that is the angle of light within the atmosphere This actually depends on the latitude of a place. The higher the latitude, the lesser is the angle they make with the surface of the earth, resulting in slant sun rays. The area covered by vertical rays is always less than the slant rays. If more area is covered, the energy gets distributed and the net energy received per unit area decreases. Moreover, the slant rays are required to pass through greater depth of the atmosphere, resulting in more absorption, scattering and diffusion. the passage of solar radiation through the atmosphere the atmosphere is largely transparent to short wave solar radiation the incoming solar radiation passes through the atmosphere before striking the earth's surface within the troposphere water vapor ozone and other gases absorb much of the near infrared radiation very small suspended particles in the troposphere scatter visible spectrum both to the space and towards the earth's surface this process adds color to the sky the red color of the rising and the setting sun and the blue spatial distribution of insulation at the earth's surface the insulation received at the surface varies from about 320 watts per square per square meters in the tropics to about 70 watts per square meter at the poles Maximum insulation is received over the subtropical deserts where the co- where the cloudiness is the least. Equator receives comparatively less insulation than the tropics. Generally, at the same latitude the insulation is more over the continent than over the oceans. In winter, 
the middle and higher latitudes receive less radiation than in summer heating and cooling of atmosphere there are different ways of heating and cooling of the atmosphere the earth after being heated by insulation transmits the heat to the atmospheric layers nearer to the earth in long wave form the air in contact with the land gets heated slowly and the upper layers in contact with the lower layers also get heated this process is called conduction conduction takes place when two bodies of unequal temperature are in contact with one another there is a flow of energy from the warmer to the cooler body the transfer of heat continues until both the bodies attain the same temperature or the contact is broken conduction is important in heating conduction is important in heating the lower layers of the atmosphere the air in contact with the earth rises vertically on heating in the form of currents and further transmits the heat of the atmosphere this process of vertical heating of the atmosphere is known as convection the convective transfer of energy is confined only to the troposphere the transfer of heat through horizontal movement of air is called advection horizontal movement of the air is relatively more important than the vertical movement in middle latitudes most of diurnal that is day and night variation in daily weather is caused by advection alone in tropical regions particularly in northern india during summer season local winds called lu is the outcome of advection processes terrestrial radiation the insulation received by the earth is in short waves forms and heats up its surface the earth after being heated itself becomes a radiating body and it radiates energy to the atmosphere in long wave form this energy heats up the atmosphere from below This process is known as terrestrial radiation. The long wave radiation is absorbed by the atmospheric gases, particularly by carbon dioxide and the other greenhouse gases. Thus the atmosphere is indirectly heated by the earth's radiation. The atmosphere in turn radiates and transmits heat to the space. Finally, the amount of heat received from the sun is returned to space, thereby maintaining constant temperature at the earth's surface and in the atmosphere. heat budget of the planet earth the earth as a whole does not accumulate or lose heat it maintains its temperature this can happen only if the amount of heat received in the form of insulation equals the amount lost by the earth through terrestrial radiation consider that the insulation received at the top of the atmosphere is 100% while passing through the atmosphere some amount of energy is reflected scattered and absorbed only the remaining part reaches the earth's surface Roughly 35 units are reflected back to space even before reaching the earth's surface. Of these, 27 units are reflected back from the top of the clouds and 2 units from the snow and ice covered areas of the earth. The reflected amount of radiation is called the albedo of the earth. The remaining 65 units are absorbed, 14 units within the atmosphere and 51 units by the earth's surface. The earth radiates back 51 units in the form of terrestrial radiation. Of these, 17 units are radiated to space directly and the remaining 34 units are absorbed by the atmosphere. That is 6 units absorbed directly by the atmosphere, 9 units through convection and turbulence and 19 units through the latent heat of condensation. 48 units absorbed by the atmosphere. That is 14 units from insulation. plus 34 units from terrestrial radiation are also radiated back into space thus the total radiation returning from the earth and the atmosphere respectively is 17 plus 48 equals 65 units which balances the total of 65 units received from the sun this is termed as the heat budget or the heat balance of the earth This explains why the earth neither warms up nor cools down despite the huge transfer of heat that takes place. Variation in the net heat budget at the earth's surface. As explained earlier, there are variations in the amount of radiation received at the earth's surface. Some part of the earth has surplus radiation balance while the other part has deficit. The surplus heat energy from the tropics is redistributed polewards and as a result the tropics do not get progressively heated up. due to the accumulation of excess heat or the high latitudes get permanently frozen due to excess deficit temperature the interaction of insulation with the atmosphere and the earth's surface creates heat which is measured in terms of temperature 
while heat represents the molecular movement of particles comprising a substance the temperature is the measurement in degrees of how hot or cold a thing or a place is factors controlling temperature distribution the temperature of air at any place is influenced by the latitude of the place the altitude of the place the distance from the sea the air mass circulation the presence of warm and cold ocean currents and local aspects the latitude the temperature of a place depends on the insulation received it has been explained earlier that the insulation varies according to the latitude hence the temperature also varies accordingly the altitude the atmosphere is indirectly heated by terrestrial radiation from below therefore the places near the sea level record higher temperatures than the places situated at higher elevations in other words the temperature generally decreases with increasing height the rate of decrease of temperature with height is termed as a normal lapse rate it is 6.5 degrees centigrade per 1000 meters distance from the sea another factor that influences the temperature is the location of a place with respect to the sea compared to land the sea gets heated slowly and loses heat slowly land heats up and cools down quickly therefore the variation in temperature over the sea is less compared to land the places situated near the sea come under the moderating influence of the sea and land breezes which moderate the temperature air mass and ocean currents like the land and sea breezes the passage of air masses also affects the temperature the places which come under the influence of warm air masses experience higher temperature and the places that come under the influence of cold air masses experience low temperature similarly the places located on the coast where the warm ocean currents flow record higher temperature than the places located on the coast where the cold currents flow distribution of temperature the global distribution of temperature can well be understood by studying the temperature distribution in january and july the temperature distribution is generally shown on the map with the help of isotherms the isotherms are lines joining places having equal temperature in general the effect of the latitude on temperature is well pronounced on the map as the isotherms are generally parallel to the latitude the deviation from this general trend is more pronounced in january than in july especially in the northern hemisphere in the northern hemisphere the land surface area is much larger than in the southern hemisphere Hence the effects of land mass and the ocean currents are well pronounced. In January, the isotherms deviate to the north over the ocean and to the south over the continent. This can be seen on the North Atlantic Ocean. The presence of warm ocean currents, Gulf Stream and North Atlantic Drift make the Northern Atlantic Ocean warmer and the isotherms bend towards the north. Over the lane the temperature decreases sharply and the isotherms bend towards the south in Europe. It is much pronounced in the Siberian plain. The mean January temperature along 60 degrees east longitude is minus 20 degrees centigrade both at 80 degrees north and 50 degrees north latitudes. The mean monthly temperature for January is over 27 degrees centigrade in equatorial oceans over 24 degrees centigrade in the tropics and 2 degrees centigrade to 0 degrees centigrade in the middle latitudes and minus 18 degrees centigrade to minus 8 degrees centigrade in the eurasian continental interior the effect of the ocean is well pronounced in the southern hemisphere here the isotherms are more or less parallel to the latitudes and the variation in temperature is more gradual than in the northern hemisphere the isotherm of 20 degree centigrade 10 degree centigrade and 0 degree centigrade runs parallel to 35 degrees south 45 degrees south and 60 degrees south latitudes respectively In July the isotherms generally run parallel to the latitude. The equatorial oceans record warmer temperature more than 27 degrees centigrade. Over the land more than 30 degrees centigrade is noticed in the subtropical continental region of Asia along the 30 degrees north latitude. Along the 40 degrees north runs the isotherm of 10 degrees centigrade and along the 40 degrees south the temperature is 10 degrees centigrade. The highest range of temperature is more than 60 degrees centigrade over the northeastern part of the Eurasian continent. This is due to continentality. This is due to the continents. The least range of temperature that is 3 degrees centigrade is found between 20 degrees south 
and 15 degrees north. Inversion of temperature Normally, the temperature decreases with the increase in elevation. It is called normal lapse rate. At times, the situations are reversed and the normal lapse rate is inverted. It is called inversion of temperature. Inversion is usually of short duration but quite common nonetheless. A long winter night with clear skies and still air is ideal situation for inversion. The heat of the day is radiated off during the night and by early morning hours the earth is cooler than the air above. Over polar areas, temperature inversion is normal throughout the year. Surface inversion promotes stability in the lower layers of the atmosphere. Smoke and dust particles get collected beneath the inversion layer and spread horizontally to fill the lower strata of the atmosphere. Dense fog in the mornings are common occurrences especially during winter season. This inversion commonly lasts for a few hours until the sun comes up and brings warmth to the earth. The inversion takes place in hills and mountains due to air. Cold air at the hills and mountains produced during night flows under the influence of gravity. Being heavy and dense, the cold air acts almost like water and moves down the slope to pile up deeply in pockets and valley bottoms with warm air above. This is called air drainage. It protects plants from frost damages. There are two laws in physics which are relevant here. They are, Planck's law states that hotter a body, the more energy it will radiate and shorter the wavelength of that radiation. Specific heat is the energy needed to raise the temperature of 1 gram of substance by 1 Celsius.